My name is David Stifel, um, and uh, my co-authors are here, uh, TRA and Folly, so um, welcome them here as well. Um, and so this is the uh, case study uh, using the uh, poverty toolkit for, uh, for Madagascar. Um, and uh, so <laughs> essentially two questions that we um, address in this paper. The first is, uh, quite simply, what are the levels uh, of poverty in Madagascar, and how have these levels changed over time? Um, and the second being is that um, do the snapshots of poverty that we get from these household surveys, and we have household surveys from uh, 2001, 2005, and 2010, um, do they represent long-term trends in, in uh, poverty, and uh, how much do they uh, represent short-term shocks or some combination of the two? And, and for Madagascar, this is a very relevant question um, and when we're thinking about poverty here. So, uh, so the first question, um, how has uh, monetary poverty changed? Um, and so this, uh, this depends in large part on the consistency of a number of things, right? So uh, starting with uh, the surveys over time, the survey instruments. Uh, and this is one thing that, uh, that INSTAT uh, has done very well. Uh, um, following some work that I did with TRA in, uh, back in 2000, uh, trying to reconcile differences in, in um, uh, in survey designs in the 1900, or 1990s, um, there's been a big emphasis to maintain the consistency of the uh, survey instruments and, the, um, and the, uh, the questionnaires, and in particular the, the expenditure uh, components. Um, and so that is something that we're not so concerned about. Um, the second is um, the construction of the consumption aggregate and how that uh, is consistent over time. And uh, here again, uh, INSTAT has been very good about that. In fact, the, the same two guys have done the consumption aggregate for all three years, um, and uh, these are guys we've worked quite closely with. Uh, so uh, the poverty lines, uh, right? So here um, we get into this question of uh, specificity that, uh, uh, and consistency that, that Channing uh, described earlier, and I should note that um, I'll skip through some of my slides because I uh, prepared this thinking that Channing was going to talk about something else uh, and then they changed the paper, so I'm, I'm thankful that he did so. Uh, so the original poverty lines uh, for Madagascar, well, they started with the 2001 uh, poverty line and uh, each year, uh, for each of these years, they've updated them uh, with, for inflation and uh, regional price variation. Um, as is common practice, um, is my sense. Um, and uh, so we, we are going to apply the poverty toolkit to here. And I should note that, uh, just as an aside, that poverty lines uh, are, uh, are, can also be used uh, as cost of living ind indices that will allow us uh, interpersonal uh, welfare comparisons. So this will use this not only for uh, a threshold, but also to deflate um, our consumption aggregates as we, uh, as we do uh, poverty incidence curves. Uh, so this, I'm, I'm just going to skip right through this because this, uh, this is what Channing had uh, just described, uh, and uh, go to our data. So the data we have here are uh, the household survey data uh, that are nationally representative, uh, that are uh, collected by INSTAT. Um, and uh, for the three years that we have, we have um, growing sample sizes, but and this has to do with, uh, with changes in uh, in the regions, uh, initially the strata were six provinces, now they're 22 regions. For our purposes here, uh, we're sticking with the, the six regions uh, for comparability purposes in calculating the poverty lines. Um, and the, again, the, the questionnaires are quite similar. So um, that's, that's what we're working with. Now, for our poverty estimates uh, from uh, using the, the toolkit, all right, so this is where we, um, uh, we uh, the, the aggregate is constructed and um, the, um, the, the toolkit is applied in which we are, do the revealed preference tests and, and um, uh, get these utility consistent poverty estimates. Um, and so what we find uh, for, uh, at the national level is uh, that poverty has risen over the course of the decade. Um, and we can see that the uh, significant uh, increase occurred in the first half of the decade uh, in terms of the headcount ratio, uh, but that we see that there's actually not a whole lot of action going on among the more po uh, uh, poverty-sensitive uh, uh, measures of poverty. Um, 
Now, when we turn to urban areas, uh, we see that uh, this is where poverty has risen considerably, again, uh, in the first half uh, of the decade. Um, and here, uh, the more distribution-sensitive measures also uh, record an increase uh, in poverty. Now, in rural areas, um, the increases are, uh, the levels are higher, certainly, um, but the increases are not quite as large as in the rural area, as in the urban areas. And in fact, if we look at the distribution measures um, of poverty, uh, there seems to be a decline. And so naturally we turn to our uh, poverty incidence curves to get some, uh, some intuition about what's going on here. Um, and so here you see at the national level, you see that yes, around the poverty line there are more, uh, more poor. Um, but as we look at the lower end of the distribution, we see that the poor of the poor um, have higher levels of, <coughs> of expenditures, uh, which is captured in those, uh, the uh, depth and severity of poverty. Um, in the urban areas, um, for the most part, uh, the, um, the time period between 2001 and 2005, we see a, a, a worsening of, uh, of household consumption levels. Um, and this persisted uh, through uh, the rest of uh, the latter half of the decade. In rural areas, on the other hand, we see a marginal increase uh, in poverty right around the poverty line, uh, but we do see uh, this improvement in, uh, in well-being for the poorest 50 percent of the population uh, in Madagascar. Um, so what's, what's going on here? Um, well, um, oh, and then we can look at inequality. I'll put it, this all in context. Uh, we find that, uh, that inequality uh, over the course of the decade is uh, decreasing. If you look at the Lawrence curves, they, uh, they don't cross at the national level, but they do cross at the, uh, at the, uh, at the, at the urban level, uh, especially between 2005 and 2010, and hence it's not surprising we get different results for using a tile and a Gini coefficient. So what's driving the, uh, uh, the decrease in inequality is uh, in the rural areas. And much of, uh, of uh, inequality is explained within, uh, within group, which is not surprising given the large proportion of the population in the rural areas to begin with. So some context. So these surveys uh, were conducted in 2001, 2005, and 2010. Um, what was going on in this decade? Well, Shortly after the 2001 survey was conducted, uh, there was a political crisis uh, that uh, disrupted urban areas in particular, uh, but the country um, as a whole. And um, so just after the, uh, after the, the crisis was resolved, uh, the international community came, uh, came to the, the aid of the, uh, of the, national, uh, the uh, uh, elected government and uh, provided um, support for uh, the government. So there was the shock with some uh, recovery uh, based on support from uh, the international community. Now, um, right around the time of the, the second survey, uh, there was a rice uh, price crisis and uh, a, an appreciation of the exchange rate uh, combined with uh, an increase in rice prices, international rice prices, meant that rice prices in Madagascar increased by some 50 percent. And given that rice is the main uh, uh, food consumption item, uh, uh, households were gen hit generally quite hard. Um, and so this was just around the time of the second survey. So we're having repeated shocks. Um, now, um, between uh, just after the, uh, the uh, second survey, the 2005 survey, we saw some growth. I'll, I'll illustrate this um, uh, in a minute. Uh, but then just before the 2010 survey uh, was the beginning of uh, the most recent political crisis, and one that is, um, this, uh, is ongoing. Um, and uh, because this was effectively a coup d'etat, or at least uh, uh, interpreted as a coup d'etat by the international community, uh, it w the international community responded with condemnation and uh, reduction of aid to only humanitarian assistance. So all development assistance effectively uh, has, uh, was uh, withdrawn, uh, at least initially. Um, and uh, so you don't have that same sort of rebound. And, and unfortunately, this is still going on. There's hope uh, that the elections next month will take place. Um, so how can we better understand what's going on? Well, it, we'll use some complementary data to, uh, to understand what's going on in the time periods between the shocks. We use national accounts data. Uh, we use uh, non-nationally representative data, uh, a urban uh, labor force survey, uh, some rural uh, 
uh, panel data that is not nationally representative but gives um, a, a sense of, of what's going on and non-monetary measures. So uh, this graph here to me just uh, gives you a great sense of, uh, of uh, what was going on between the, uh, uh, the surveys. If you look, uh, so the, the red uh, dots are the headcount ratios from the, uh, the respective surveys. You see that just shortly after the, uh, the first survey, the political crisis uh, occurred and there was a uh, sharp drop in, uh, in GDP, uh, GDP per capita followed by a, uh, a rise in GDP, oh, I was working on the Arndt uh, Librant uh, <laughs> approach, but, uh, uh, and uh, followed by, uh, by growth uh, thereafter, but uh, apparently not uh, enough to, uh, to uh, reduce poverty. Um, and it, but you continue to have uh, growth following uh, up until the 2009 political crisis, after which uh, we had the, the household survey. So the timing of the surveys uh, really uh, suggest, well, if you just look at the surveys uh, and the poverty over time, it looks like there's a, a progression of increasing poverty, but if you look at it in terms of the timing of the shocks, the shocks uh, seem to be pulling the, uh, the economy down uh, while there's some recovery between uh, the survey periods. Um, now, in, in terms of uh, the sectors that is uh, most uh, affected by this, it's the, the service sector. And uh, given that uh, the service sector is a very important one in urban areas, uh, this, uh, this gives you an indication of, of uh, why uh, the urban population was, was hit. And what's interesting to see is the shift of uh, the urban labor force uh, following the shocks from uh, the service sector into, uh, into agriculture. So agriculture provided that social safety net. Uh, in, in the urban sector. Um, now our other non-monetary measures under five stunting, uh, over the course of this, uh, of the decade, we saw uh, moderate improvements, right? Infant mortality rates, aside from a sharp rise in uh, 2002 following the uh, financial, excuse me, following the uh, political crisis, we saw, um, otherwise we saw uh, moderate improvements over the course of the decade. Um, and over the course of the decade, we also saw persistent rising uh, net schooling enrollment rates. Low, can still low in general, 75% uh, for primary, but, uh, but uh, quite low for uh, secondary, um, 20, on the order of 25% for lower uh, secondary, and even lower for, uh, for the Lise level, um, which is going to be a challenge for, uh, for opportunities and uh, uh, um, poverty reduction in the future. Um, so, briefly, these snapshots of uh, poverty missed the underlying uh, long-term trends, uh, and the growth and, and improved well-being uh, were interrupted by these. Uh, unfortunately, the latest political crisis uh, is in its fourth year, and, and uh, it seems to be like more not a short-term shock, uh, but we hope that uh, that they'll uh, will move beyond that. Now, um, I just wanted to take a couple of minutes to um, compare. Uh, the utility consistent uh, poverty estimates with those from the original instat estimates um, and so uh, what we see here on the left are the uh, the original instat estimates and then on the right we see the uh, the difference uh, between the those uh, from the utility consistent estimates and and the instat estimates and we see that the instat estimates are qu are considerably larger uh, at least for the headcount ratios and and the depth of uh, of poverty, uh, though uh, even the P2s are, uh, are a bit mixed. Uh, in, the, um, in the urban areas, we see a similar sort of pattern of increasing um, poverty and then a marginal increasing uh, poverty uh, between 2005 and 2010. So the pattern is similar there. The pattern is not similar at the, at the national level. Uh, and again, uh, the, the levels are higher um, than, uh, than the utility consistent measures. Um, considerably higher at the at the rural level, uh, and the the pattern here is um, is uh, remarkably different between uh, the latter years, uh, with a much with a very high rise in, in poverty uh, to 2010, um, and uh, again uh, higher at the um, uh, around the poverty line, but at the tails, um, it, it's a bit of a mixed bag. So why the differences? The consumption aggregates are the same, uh, so that's not the source of this. Uh, 
when we look at all of the, the utility consistent poverty lines, we find that they are all 13 to 46 percent lower uh, than, uh, than the original estimates. Um, and so this could be due to differing calorie requirements because uh, the, with the toolkit we allow for, uh, okay, almost there. Um, we allow for differing uh, calorie requirements uh, based on uh, demographics and, and uh, fertility rates, but this is not the problem. In fact, uh, we would, uh, the, the calorie requirements are, are higher with the utility consistent measure, uh, uh, measure, so that we would expect it to go the other way. So differing um, baskets for costing calories, uh, we'd hope to uh, compare this to the, two, the 2001 survey, but we can't find this data code. Um, and so we're in a bit of a bind for uh, making that direct comparison. Um, but w one of the things that we can consider is that the regional 2001 poverty lines uh, for the original estimates are updated uh, with inflation rates calculated from the major cities each year. So you talk about the, the issue of rural prices. Uh, here they're imposing uh, inflation in the regions at the major urban areas in those regions, not, not um, the uh, smaller urban areas. So it's just a subset of this. So this has a real issue for uh, rural areas. And uh, further, the CPI baskets uh, that are used for inflation uh, place greater weight on non-food items than the uh, utility consumption basket or utility consistent baskets. So uh, suggesting that uh, that uh, you know the the, um, the household survey is uh, representing uh, the uh, the consumption weights differently in uh, 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 specific ways. So just. Um, in brief, again, the utility consistent poverty estimates suggest that urban areas are worse off, uh, while their uh, greater percentage of poor are uh, rural are poor. The rural poor are actually less poor uh, in terms of the uh, the uh, higher um, the sensitive uh, measures of uh, depth and severity. Um, and the snapshots uh, that we have are during a tumultuous decade and that the underlying uh, trend of growth and uh, welfare improvements are interrupted uh, by these shocks. So we don't want to necessarily interpret this as a long-term trend unless Madagascar is repeatedly hit by these shocks, uh, which is not a trend that um, I would hope to see. Thank you. Okay, let's follow the same pattern. And there are two questions there, and let's take them uh, first and then give David a possibility to respond. Um, thank you. So the way I'm interpreting this, and I, I'm, I'm saying it, it's looking, it's, it's very hard, impossible almost, for me to believe that you're making utility consistent comparisons between the two sets of poverty estimates. So it looks to me as if you must surely be using a lower reference utility level with your so-called utility consistent poverty lines. You just don't know. So I think putting them together like that is really, really not right. I mean, you know, you, the, 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 um, the official estimates uh, may not be utility consistent internally, mm -hmm. but if they're at a higher reference utility level and that's all that's driving this, yeah, I think you really should say that and, and make that clear. And you can't really establish it given the problems you've got, but, but I think that's... that's. And then a second comment, and, and this is a general comment, but I have to go to something else, so I can't... Um, the, um, I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm not a great fan of this aunt a similar um, method, but I, I'm sort of sympathetic. But uh, there's a, I think, back to that basic problem of, 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 a, of people accepting that the same utility function. Um, the, I'd be curious to see how all this differed with the, essentially the other method of doing utility consistent uh, uh, public comparisons, which comes from, I mean, in the history of this, we, we went down that route of re using revealed preference, decided it was a non, we didn't go that direction, uh, turned back to another route, which was essentially the numerical method that we use routinely, where we basically say, calculate, if you make a first assumption about what the poverty line is, calculate a bundle in that, in that line, in that, in that neighborhood of that, and then iterate till you get convergence. Um, and uh, there's a version of that that um, Angus Deaton has come up with, which is just an extension of it, which we now use routinely for the purchasing power parity rates for the poor. And that's really become our main method of 
doing so-called utility consistent comparisons. But in a sense, we, we, we argue that they're utility consistent, but without imposing revealed preference, without imposing a common utility function. And the common utility function here is common across commodities with absolutely no heterogeneity in any other dimension, including regionally. So mm -hmm. just commenting on the, that, that difference in the literature. But it would be very interesting to do something comparative on these two approaches. There was another question. Please. My name is Haruna Sekabira from Uganda. I work with IFPRI. So my question just comes with your uh, concluding remark number three. Actually, that's why I have maybe trouble. You could throw more light. So uh, you are saying that shocks interrupt the, uh, uh, the, the, the estimates that uh, perhaps you uh, uh, produce. So my concern is how do you or how would you generate representative poverty estimates for long-term strategic planning independent of the effects of those shocks, particularly for the case of Madagascar and many other countries in Africa, which are you know, characterized, characterized with several shocks each and every other time. Thank you. Quite frankly, I'm, I'm not sure how you, would, uh, how you would do that. I think uh, the important thing is to understand uh, that these, sh these shocks do take place and, and uh, disentangling those long-term effects uh, from the short-term shocks. Uh, so that we can interpret those those changes in poverty, because um, otherwise uh, you know, we we rely on the, uh, the household survey to to get those estimates. Um, as for the differences in utility, yes, I, I think that I, I, we need to be clear on uh, on on that. Um, did you want to respond to the second question? Um, or maybe we can uh, take it in, in the okay. end then, because it's a broader question. Not I think it's part related. of the broader. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thanks. Thanks so much.